Okay, so I'm going to be working on some sheet metal here today. Nothing too crazy. Gradually increasing what I'll be able to do with these videos. Bear with me here. Yeah. So I'll be starting out at the shop making a two-piece plenum or a three-piece if you count the top as one of the pieces. I've already pre-measured all of my sides so that's what I'll be doing for this plenum. I did not get the video of me putting the plenum together or putting it on the furnace so I will not have the finished product with this. This is just going to be more of just me making the metal. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up doing an integrated S and a regular cap on the top that I would use a snap lock tool for to secure it to the plenum. So it'll be three sides, it'll be one piece of metal, the top cap, and then also a front piece as well that would could also act as a door to be removed for service or adding air conditioning this went into a house that had a furnace only with no AC and so I didn't have to worry about a coil but I made my metal big enough so that in the future if they decided to add air conditioning to the home there would be space to accommodate the coil So the biggest thing I did with the integrated S, there's a lot of ways to do metal. I'm not a super pro at it, but I'm not a complete amateur. I'm still learning. I take input very well most of the time. Other than that, if you're watching this and you see something I could have done differently, please feel free to share. My biggest thing here is I had a ream furnace. It was a B cabinet and those end up being 17 and a half. And so the opening, once you bend all your tabs up, ends up being about 16 and a quarter to 16 and a half. So I made my metal 16 and a half for the back piece. And for the sides, I made them 20 inches. And uh, I would have taken out my, my phone to use as a calculator because I'm not the sharpest at numbers in my head, but I know 20 times 2 or 20 plus 20 is going to be 40. And then that 16 and a half will add to that 40 will give me um, 56 and a half. And then I'm going to add to that 56 an additional three and a half inches because I end up using an inch and three quarters for my integrated S. So I would have made my total length for my height and the width based on those measurements I had made ahead of time. And I will add an inch and three quarters to the left side and an inch and three quarters to the right side for that integrated S that I'm using for my metal. And then I'll also mark at 21 and 3 quarters on each side, on the left side and the right side of the piece of metal. And then I measured my back piece to make sure that I got 16 and a half because that's what I had wanted to get for the width of the plenum. And uh, I use a scriber to mark everything out. Ooh. That way I can have accurate measurements. And I'll scribe one inch on the bottom. I'll scribe half inch on the top of the plenum. The one inch will end up being fold it over to a hem to make what I like to call a safety fold so there's no sharp edges on the outside for anyone to rub their hand against and get cut. 
So I'll also do a half inch scribe on the bottom as well. And then on what, what I would call the inside of the metal, which is what you won't see on the outside. Um, I'll scribe the top and bottom of the piece at an inch and three quarters. And then I'll flip it on the face side and I'll scribe it at three quarters of an inch on the edges, on the left and right edges. That I'll use for my spots where I fold the metal to make the, the integrated S. And then I'll notch, I'll also notch out all my points so that nothing uh, binds up when I'm putting the metal together and it sits down real nice and then of course when I'm bending all the metal up I'll also cross break the metal so that once it's installed you won't get what I call or what I've learned to call it tin canning from the metal shaking it you know kind of makes a, a thunderous sound and uh, when you cross break it it helps minimize that sound and could also potentially eliminate it as well. Does not need to be a heavy cross break. It's usually a real small cross break that I'll do. Unfortunately, I'm still relatively new to this, so I'm not the best at getting the angles that I would like to see. I know there's a portion where you're not able to actually see what I'm doing while I'm cutting the metal and marking it. You just end up seeing my feet. So just bear with me as I learn how to do all of this and doing the overdub for the videos. It's been a long time since I've done anything like this and the software is not as intuitive as I thought it was going to be but that's okay. I'll learn how to do all this stuff and I'll make something that's better you know in the future for sure. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop talking now because there's not really much more for me to say. So just if you watch the video enjoy it. If not, whatever, I don't care. I'm not your dad, do what you want. Got my own kids. Yeah.